What is up, guys? Today we're going to talk about Donald Trump and why his quest to beat Kamala Harris at the American ballot box is fundamentally flawed and ultimately will fail. You ready? Let's get into it. So the first thing to acknowledge with American politics and specifically American elections is that typically whoever has the most money will probably win that election. Uh, I talk a lot on my podcast about the beer test. You know, actually, whoever is the most likable, whoever is the character you could most envisage yourself sitting in a bar having a laugh with over a pint, that's probably who will end up going on to win the White House. But actually, a more academic observation would be whoever's got the most bloated campaign finance war chest traditionally would go on to win it. 2016 is an anomaly in that respect. And interestingly, that was the first time Donald Trump was obviously going for the American presidency. He had half as much money as Hillary Clinton, and yet he still went on to go and win that election. Now, you could make a couple of kind of offshoot observations of that, if you like. You could say uh, there was such a strength and depth of feeling around that time. People were so invested in the idea of a break from the status quo that it was sufficient to overrule the tradition of most money wins. Uh, You could say it's a Trump-specific thing. People love him more than other people like giving money, or you know, something like that. But anyway, 2016 was the anomaly. Typically it is who's got the most money wins. But whatever you say, don't say, don't call America an oligarchy. They really don't like that. They like to think of themselves as the world's greatest democracy, <laughs> not the world's most obvious oligarchy where actually you can just buy the presidency <laughs> if you've got enough money. Um, so. How much money does Donald Trump have in the war chest at the moment? Uh, I think it's about $260 million. Um, whereas the Democrats, Biden, had uh, 70 million shy of that. So Trump's up here, Biden was down here. Now, don't get too excited about that because, yes, Trump technically has more. And so you would think, OK, well, traditionally then, and adding on to that, his tradition of winning the 2016 election, despite blah, 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 um, You have to factor in that Donald Trump still has these court cases, his legal costs, a lot of that stuff. Like he's spending campaign finance money on his legal costs. He's been on TV asking people to donate (laughs) towards settlements, towards fines, towards paying for his lawyers. So and that's assuming that he isn't also dipping into the kitty to pay off, you know, former porn stars. (laughs) Here's here's one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Uh, because that was, you know, that was one of his court cases with Stormy Daniels. Um, so he's still got legal expenses that he needs to pay and they run into millions of dollars in, in America. What else? You've also got all of the donors for the Democrats who were holding back on donations because they were trying to apply pressure to get Joe Biden to step down. Now that he has stepped down, all of that money's coming in. Like They took in about $45 million within the first... We're only 24 hours after that announcement now, right? $45 million within the first, like, I think it's 12 or 16 hours afterwards. So I would fully expect the Democrats to eclipse Donald Trump sometime in the next, like, week or two. Easy. A lot of people say, oh, well, people like Elon Musk are pledging, you know, $45 million every month towards Donald Trump's campaign. Well, OK, but let's say let's say he does do that and it started when he said it, right? That would be the 21st of July. That's 21st of August, 21st of September, 21st of October. So you've only got three payments of that, right? (laughs) Or like three and a bit payments, maybe. Um, So what's that? It's going to be somewhere between 120 million, 160 million. Um, And the only reason that people fear that sort of thing is because it's Elon Musk, because everything he says grabs headlines, right? There's still a lot of Democrat supporters who sit in a similar, if not the same league, people like Warren Buffett. So I wouldn't be too scared about that. I think the Dems will absolutely equal Trump's fundraising ability and they won't have to draw down on it to pay off embarrassing legal complications. The second reason I think uh, Trump will fail against Kamala Harris is because Trump has a real problem with the woman vote, right? I don't know. I don't know if it's escaped your attention, uh, but Donald Trump is not particularly, uh, I don't know, like woman voter bait. You know, I don't know if it's the grab them by the P word debacle, if it's the fact that he had an affair with his wife while his wife was heavily pregnant. He's off with a porn star. 
I don't know if it's the fact that he was found liable for a rape uh, and made to pay like $83 million or s somewhere around that sort of region. But whichever one of those it is, <laughs> maybe it's the times that he went into the beauty pageant, like changing rooms and just sort of stood there creeping. Maybe it's all of that stuff. Um, or the litany of misogynistic language that he's come out with over the last few years. Uh, Donald Trump has an issue with the woman vote. And obviously women make up roughly half of the American population. Now there's a lot of people that will say, well, it didn't really seem to cause him that much trouble in 2016. He got elected in 2016, right? But his rhetoric has got more batshit since then. You know, and he's got this new VP, JD Vance on. Both of them have made comments serious discussions about not just you know abortion rights reproductive rights but literally like uh, birth control you know well maybe we should get rid of birth control maybe feminism was <laughs> was the pinch point in the downfall of american civilization maybe we need to take away the pill from the women so they have more babies get back in the kitchen i don't think that stuff goes down too well with women and i think the idea of the first female president and i think somebody who is pro-woman and pro reproductive choice and all of that, I think that's going to resonate more with women. Third reason, you may have heard this banded about already if you're on Twitter and, you know, all the rest of it. Um, but previously, the rhetoric that was coming out of the RNC, um, delegates, have congressmen, senators, whatever, you name it, uh, was that Joe Biden was too old. Now that he's stepped down, Donald Trump will actually be the oldest president. <laughs> in the history of the United States. So all of that rhetoric about, oh, you know, you're too old, you're too doddery, forgetful, you nod off, all of that stuff can now be extracted from Joe Biden and wrapped around Donald Trump. The rhetoric that they allowed to permeate into the election campaign or the pre-campaign, if you want to call it that, can now be reciprocated, just pushed back on Donald Trump. Fourth reason, uh, I used to listen to Ian Dale in the car on the way home from a big broadcaster that I used to work at in West London. And I remember him saying, I, th I don't know if it was about the Brexit referendum or if it was about whatever that election was around that time, but I remember him saying, elections are won on who can present the most positive outlook. Like whoever is optimistic and positive at the podium, that is who people will get behind because they want some hope, they want some change. Hence, you know, hope and change and all that stuff. Donald Trump's presentations, slogans, and marketing bump in 2016 were kind of like, a lot of it was negative, but a lot of it was make America great again, right? It was a sort of hark back to a retro time, a golden era of, you know, Ford Mustangs and your dad working at the garage and he brings home the bacon and your mom's and, you know, it's re retrospective sort of, you know, history washing, if you like. Uh, but it was it was inarguably positive in that, you know, make it all great again. Similar to the Brexit thing here, right? Nostalgia. He doesn't really have that this time. They've already done the make America great again. It didn't really, like, did, did anyone's lives actually get any better? No, not really. Things just sort of, you know, went along. I mean, a few rich people got way richer. That's basically what happened. Some billionaires got a tax break. <laughs> um, so what have they got left in their arsenal? All they've got is negativity. Just attacking, attacking, creepy Joe, sleepy Joe. They're going to go after Kamala for her race, for her identity, for the fact that she's a woman, etc., etc. Meanwhile, Kamala Harris actually has a reasonable stab at throwing out a positive campaign. First woman president, first woman of colour. She's going to be the younger candidate, substantially. She's going to represent a younger demographic of voter. She's going to represent the future and optimism and planning, things to be excited about. He's going to represent the golden era, make America a, a great again, again, you know, negativity, name calling, plus the fact that she's a woman and he's a man who's got all of these legal complications behind him. So, yeah, these these are my reasons that I think he's probably on course for a lose. What do you guys think? Do you think, do you think she's on course to win? I mean, she's not right now, like with, with polling and everything, but do you think she's got a shot at it? Or do you think Trump just has this in the bag? Let me know.